There are some excellent articles on the web about the MP38 and MP40 submachine guns, so I will not give you a full history of these arms now. To cut the technical part short, it is full auto only, firing with open bolt and it's blowback operated. What I really would like to tell you indeed is how it was used by the soldiers. The submachine gun tactics were invented in the First World War. The German Stoßtruppen or Schack troops strongly needed a light weapon to clean the enemy trenches that was capable of high rate of fire and had an increased magazine capacity. The shooting ranges in the trenches were minimal, so there was no need to fire a rifle round. Indeed, they needed a cartridge that was easily controllable with full auto firing as well. The MG18 and the 9mm Luger round were good answers to this question. The closest predecessor of the MP40 was the MP38. Not much difference in operation, but the 38 needed more money, time and raw material for production. For the production of the MP40, stamped steel was used, not machined parts as with the previous model. If you check the Second World War movies of today, you will see a million of German soldiers running around with MP40s, firing with one meter muzzle flashes. In fact, this is not true. The firepower of a standard Second World War German squad was based on the light machine gun, an MG34 or 42. In the beginning years of the war, three men operated the machine gun, the squad leader or Gruppenführer was armed with submachine gun, and all the other six or five soldiers were armed with bolt action repeating rifles. This is strongly different from the standard American version, where the firepower was based on the soldiers armed with Garand semi-auto rifles, supported with one soldier armed with Browning auto rifle. The Soviet Red Army had a different idea on using the SMGs as well. They armed complete battalions and regiments with PPS submachine guns. Field stripping the gun is very easy. Remove the magazine and check if the gun is unloaded. Pull the locking stud and give it a half turn. Now pull the trigger and turn the complete barrel assembly to the right. Now you can remove the inner parts. The rate of fire is regulated with the telescopic bolt system that works something like a pneumatic brake. One common myth around the MP40 that it was so precise that in winter conditions it froze easily. Well, this is not true again. However, the oil and the grease used in the Second World War times could freeze while jamming the action. This is why many German soldiers removed the grease completely from the guns during winter times. Some even lubricated the system with soft powders like sulfur. The bolt has three positions. The first is a rest position that can be locked. The second is a firing position and the third is a safety as well. This position is not working properly in this gun due to the semi-auto conversion. In the early years of the war, the 48-hour allowance of the submachine gun was 768 rounds. The soldier carried six spare magazines. One magazine was capable of holding 32 rounds, but the soldiers usually loaded only 28 to save the tension of the magazine springs. The buttstock can be folded out by pressing the button at the axis. It was often used also when firing from the hip, as it helped holding the MP40 steadily. The submachine gun is a weapon of close combat. The sight of the MP40 is graduated to 100 and 200 meters, but as the gun is only capable of firing in full auto mode, accuracy strongly drops over 50-70 meters. It was best used in short ranges, like in city warfare, where high rate of fire was a must against an enemy moving quickly from cover to cover. Shooting the MP40 is a real delight. The recoil is minimal. The long travel of the heavy bolt absorbs the recoil completely. This particular piece was manufactured by Erma in 1942 and it was converted to semi-automatic firing mode in a permanent way.
Shooting the MP40 accurately in semi-auto mode to 25 meters is not a great challenge. The hold is anything but comfortable, but still it is a great fun to shoot the gun. And who cares about accuracy when you have the history in your hands? And if you grew up on war movies like me, there is something you must not miss if you encounter a submachine gun at the range. What I always wanted to try. <laughs> These semi-auto conversions are not the cheapest firearms on the market. They are not ideal for target shooting, but they mark an important period in firearms history. So if you're a collector of the 20th century military arms, there must be a place for the MP40 in your cabinet. <laughs>